You are listening to WTUZ Radio Podcast. Welcome to WTUZ Radio Podcast. I am your host, Rhonda. And today's topic, uh, shout out to Brother David. He sent this to me a couple weeks ago. And it is in regards to your DNA being bought out by one of the largest companies on the planet specifically an oligarchy and we've spoken with them we're uh spoken about them several times and um i will leave a link in this vid on the drop that, that i did on this company so this is about your dna being tracked and cataloged so shout out to brother david for this information okay so uh this article is from the los angeles times uh yep april 13th it came out last year why spend billions for ancestry's dna data if you don't plan to use it shirley rouge has long been fascinated with exploring her family tree at one time that meant many hours spent combing through records at courthouses and libraries for the last 20 years or so the indian wells resident has focused her research on ancestry one of the leading sites for genealogy sleuthing and dna analysis the company says it has 18 million people in the world's largest consumer DNA data. You'll find heroes in your past and you'll also find villains, Rouge87 told me. It's fascinating. I'm one of six kids, she said. I want to know where we come from and why we're all so different. Lately, though, Rouge has other questions on our mind such as why was utah based ancestry purchased in december by the new york investment firm blackstone for 4.7 billion and what does blackstone plan to do with that treasure trove of genetic data which is highly sought after by drug companies, insurance firms, employers, and others. I don't believe for a second that Blackstone bought Ancestry simply because they love people, Rouge said. You don't spend $4.7 billion unless you have a plan to make it back and more. Blackstone says she and others need, in, need not worry. We invested in Ancestry because it is a clear leader in its industry. No, LA Times, I don't want to. We invested in Ancestry because it is a clear leader in its industry with a digital subscription business that has continued to grow significantly, said Matt Anderson, a spokesman for the investment firm with more than $600 billion in assets under management. Blackstone has not and will not access users' DNA and family tree data, and we will not be sharing this data with other companies, he told me. To be crystal clear, doing so was never part of our investment thesis, period. End of story? Perhaps not. I reached out to a number of bioethnicists to ask if they believe Ancestry users could rest easy knowing their genetic data will remain under wraps. Nearly every one of them scoffed at the idea. That's utter nonsense, said Arthur Kaplan, a professor of bioethnics at New York University. I don't believe it for a second. Users of direct-to-consumer genetic products should always remember, I'm going to just say that again, 
users of direct-to-consumer genetic products should always remember that they are voluntarily giving their DNA to a company whose goal is to make money from that DNA. I'll just read that again. Users of direct-to-consumer genetic products should always remember that they are voluntarily giving their DNA to a company whose goal is to make money from that DNA, observe Laura Rivard, a biology professor at the University of San Diego. Amy Lynn McGuire, a professor of biomedical ethics at Baylor College of Medicine, said that regardless of what Blackstone says now, that could change with changes in leadership as new business opportunities present. It's naive to think Blackstone would spend almost $5 billion for an asset it has no plans to exploit, says Ellen W. Clayton, a professor of law and health policy at Vanderbilt University. Why else would they buy it, she asked. Again, Blackstone says it, it aims to recover Coop, that huge investment through ancestry subscription fee, which runs from $25 to $50 a month. But nearly every expert I spoke with cited the partnership announced in 2018 between Ancestry's rival, 23andMe, and pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline. I'll just run that back. But nearly every expert I spoke with cited the partnership announced in 2018 between Ancestry's rival, 23andMe, and pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline. Glaxo purchased a 300 million stake in 23andMe, giving it access to the genetic data of the company's 12 million users. The genealogical site GED Match, which played a role in catching the Golden State uh, person, was acquired in 2019 by San Diego Verigen, a company with links to crime labs. It's important to understand that at some point, the purpose of all these DNA companies is to monetize the data, said Catherine. Jarabiak, an associate professor of public health at the University of South Florida. The entire business model is offering a service people want and amassing a huge amount of data, she says. Ancestry's new owner, ignoring the value of its genetic database, would fly in the face of those companies operate. Gina Spatafor, an Ancestry spokesperson, man, spokeswoman, sorry, <laughs> spokeswoman said the company does not sell or share customer DNA data with insurers, employer, employers, or third-party marketers. Ancestry's commitment to these robust consumer privacy and data protections <clears throat> remain unchanged under our new ownership, she says. The company's privacy policy makes similar declarations. But deep within the text, ooh, child. Mm. Sorry, I had to sip on that one. But deep within the text, I found a provision that said ancestry reserves the right to use people's genetic information for scientific research which is vague enough and broad enough to cover any number of possible scenarios, such as collaborating with drug researchers. Uh, let me read that again. Because I remember folks calling us conspiracy theorists, folks saying that uh, we were making excuses for not doing DNA testing, but deep within the text 
I found a provision that says ancestry reserved the right to use people's genetic information for scientific research. Let's continue. The company also claims a right to use people's DNA child, for building new products and services, including services related to personal health and wellness. Uh, can we say Henrietta Lacks? Huh. So the company also claims a right to use people's DNA for building new products and services. Uh, Henrietta Lacks, including services related to personal health and wellness. Uh, Henrietta Lacks. For new products and services, uh, genetic engineering, genetic cloning, gene slicing. Let's continue. Blackstone holds stakes in nearly 100 companies, including insurers, mm -hmm, drug makers, mm -hmm, and research labs. Uh-huh. But yet they're trying to convince us they're not going to use that DNA data. Okay. Bloomberg found language in the company's regulatory filings indicated it plans to package and sell data from companies it acquired to develop new sources of revenue. Now come on through with the research, Bloomberg and them. Blackstone's Anderson told me this disclosure does not apply to our flagship private equity funds through which we invested in Ancestry. Oh, okay then. Which is to say, yes, the company plans to mine data from its various holdings, but no, not in Ancestry's case. Oh, okay, but uh, don't y'all own... Or hold stakes in insuring or insurance companies, pharmaceuticals or the drug ma makers in labs, in research labs. But you're not planning to use that DNA. Oh, okay then. To which the experts I spoke with responded with healthy skepticism. That is right, experts. The money with companies like Ancestry is in the database, said New York University's Kaplan. A savvy company like Blackstone knows this, absolutely. He and other bioethnicists were quick to note that existing federal medical privacy laws don't apply to genealogical sites. So for the slow ones in the back, it was talking out the side of their neck for folks not wanting to mess with them DNA kits. Uh, let's go over this again. He and other bioethicists were quick to note that existing federal and medical privacy laws don't apply to genealogical sites. These companies are basically free to do as they please with people's genetic data. A lot of these sites are a bait and switch, Kaplan said. They offer some interesting content, but what they're really after is your DNA. So, take the industry's assurance of genetic privacy with a grain of salt. These companies operate largely in the shadows and are limited in their activities almost solely by the honor system. So, in other words, who's going to stop them? Blackstone's website touts the firm's extensive partnership with the pharmaceutical biotechnology and medical technology industries and a focus on developing new drugs with the lowest clinical risk and the highest probability of success. 
So now this is the conspiracy theorist in me with my tinfoil hat on. We already enter and overstand the pharmaceutical side of it. As far as you think of Henrietta Lacks using her DNA, testing it to come up with new treatments. Okay, and if you don't know the story of Miss uh, Lax, I highly encourage you to research her. Um, her DNA was used. Uh, dang, I forget the hospital's name. Without her family's consent, and the amount of treatments and medical research and breakthroughs they used with her DNA is, oh my God, it's something astonishing. And since it was out her family's consent, her family, number one, that's a violation because she went into, uh, she was in the hospital. I think it was John Hopkins, John Hopkins, if I'm not mistaken. Went into the hospital, they used her DNA, based a lot of medicine and treatments and all of that off of her DNA. And the pharmaceutical made billions. Her family got nothing. Now, I know it was some type of uh, lawsuit going around with her um, people. I don't know where that landed. But that's the one side of the DNA. The other side is, I don't know what type of biochemical gene slicing, genetic engineering, which we used to think that that was only in the sci-fi movies, but now they are admitting that that's exactly what they are doing, that they're able to do cloning. I don't know what they're going to do with this DNA database. They can't convince me. Now, this is just me. Me with the conspiracy theorist tinfoil hat on. They can't convince me that they're not going to do that as well. I'm with Rue. Spending $4.7 billion for Ancestry and its massive database of genetic information only makes sense fin financially if you plan to make use of that. Blackstone says it will make its money back by selling lots of new subscriptions. Uh-huh. Yeah, subscriptions on the back end to those biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies. Both Ancestry and 23andMe laid off employees last year amid slumping demand for home DNA test. All right. So again, uh, this was uh, Brother David sent me this. Uh, thank you, Brother David. This is from the LA Times. It came out last year. Uh, why spend billions for Ancestry DNA data if you don't plan to use it? Okay, so real quick, I'm not going to go into details. I will put a link on a drop that I did on Blackstone being an oligarchy. Um, but just so you can get a high level view of what this company is about. Um, it is an investment management firm. Uh, it is been one of the largest investment investors in leverage buyout in the last three decades. And it has, uh, 88 billion in assets under management. I think they're at a trillion dollar mark now, fam, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, uh, I'm not going to go into this deeply, but I just want to give you a high level that, um, Anytime there was a financial crisis, remnants of Blackstone 
was there, okay? So the 1987 stock, stock market crash, they were involved. Um, they were hugely involved in the um, 2008 crash to the point where they were one of the companies that uh, were used as the end go-between with um, these different governments in order to clean up the financial mess. And that was even with China as well, okay? So they have partnerships with uh, the Fed Reserve, the U.S. government, all of the big guys, Golden Sachs, uh, all of, et cetera, okay? So um, I'm not going to go into this in detail. I'll drop a link in uh, the description on... Uh, a thing I did on Blackstone, how they are an oligarchy, okay? So, which means, uh, do you all understand how powerful this firm is, okay? Now, recently, they're all, they've also been in the news because they are, they have been buying up real estate heavily as well, right? So, this is the second time Blackstone has been involved heavily in the housing market. They were involved in 2008 on the back-end financial side. This time, they're involved on buying up the actual assets, okay? So they are truly an oligarchy. It is very, they're already a dangerous company. And when I say oligarchy, I, I'm saying they are their own, quote, quote, government slash nation, because that's how much finan financial power they have, how they span across all um, industries and around the world. Okay? So they, they are as large as some nations. Okay? That's without the ancestry access to the DNA. So do you understand how dangerous that is for this particular organization to own a DNA database? Hmm. There you have it, fam. When we talk about things being done by people's consent, we mean what we say. That's why it is up to you to, when you're making your decisions to do certain things, you make them because you want to make those decisions. Not based on what the crowd is doing, not based on what somebody else is telling you you should be doing. Make them because you want to make them. And do your due diligence, do your research. Because everyone that went and done those DNA tests, you consented to that. Okay? Now, I know people are going to come in the comment sections and say, well, yeah, they already have everybody's DNA because if you were born in a hospital, they have it. You're absolutely correct. I totally agree with you, which most people are pretty much born in a hospital. But you think they just for the heck of it put those ancestry tests out, those DNA testing kits out, just for the heck of it? Obviously, they're looking for something else. Because your DNA, will it evolve? That doesn't mean, by any means, of course, it's not going to change your ancestry. I'm talking about your DNA components. Now, this is my opinion. That's what they're looking for. They need an update copy of your DNA. 
And what better way to do it than to market it and attach it to your genealogy and have you voluntarily give it So everybody's free to make their own decisions. That is certainly your right. Just be informed. Do your research. Do not allow anyone to shame you, to bully you, as it regards to what you need to do for you and your bloodline. So uh, thank you again, Brother David, for this information. Uh I hope everyone gets some value out of this information. And to all of those who said what we said and meant what we said regarding DNA, ah, you know, those conspiracy people with the tinfoil hat on, there you have it. You already know what it is. (laughs) So I'm wishing everyone well on this Monday. This is Rhonda with WTUZ Radio Podcast. Peace and love, family.